Ramiridin to New Phyrexia to Phyrexia, it's finally been completed, and now the Praetors are in a turf war. If you missed the Phyrexia first look, we got to see a lot of previews, and some of the previews we saw included Elish Norn. Elish Norn's a 4-7 Vigilant Praetor for 4 and 1 white mana, who states if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, it triggers an additional time. And permanents entering the battlefield don't cause abilities of permanents your opponent control to trigger. See a lot of potential for this card when it comes to life gain decks, being able to drop it later in the game and start doubling any life gain ETBs that we do have. She's a mother of a card and the leader of the Phyrexians, in her mind at least, and among more than 100 cards that have the Phyrexian creature type within the set. Speaking of Phyrexians, Phyrexian Obliterator is back, a 5-5 with Trample for 4 black mana, and whenever a source deals damage to Phyrexian Obliterator, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. This is evasive as all hell and amazing to see back. Once this card gets online, it has to be dealt with immediately or your opponent faces their end. Somebody I'm also really excited to see is Jorkadeen, first Gold Warden. Jorkadeen's a 2-2 two, two for 2 with Trample, and whenever Jorkadeen attacks, it gets plus X plus X until the end of turn, where X is the number of equipped creatures you control. Then, if Jorkadeen's power is 4 or greater, draw a card. This card, I think, is going to see a lot of play, and equipment decks will be making a comeback for sure. Another wild thing about this whole set is that we have 10 Planeswalkers going to be in the set. Five of them we know will be completed by the end of the story arc. So the 10 Planeswalkers, the reason why they're here is because they have a goal of being able to stop the Phyrexians in their tracks from being able to complete the rest of the multiverse, and they want to do it right there on Phyrexia. Now we know that five of them will be completed by the end of the story arc, and we also know that March of the Machines is the set that follows this one. I'm not too hopeful when it comes to them actually being able to stop them, but we'll see how much of a dent they actually leave in the Phyrexians plans. When it comes to the products, Wizards of the Coast has decided to print a what if scenario version. This is whereas all the planeswalkers and some of the creatures such as Jor Kadeen are completed in a manga style version. Now, this is not to be confused with them actually being completed. It doesn't mean that they are actually completed. This is just a style. Some of them will be completed and some of them won't. The Phyrexian what if imagery also shows on some cards that do not say the cards are completed. So it's pretty confusing in my opinion, but I think that it will make more sense once we do have them printed. Among the Planeswalker completed versions in manga style, there will also be Phyrexianized basic lands. I think these lands are beautiful pieces of art and I'm really excited to collect them myself. Continuing on with the products, there will be borderless Icker showcase cards, which are absolutely stunning and will have about 40-ish cards spanning across all rarities. There will also be the original concept art styles of the Praetors printed in a Phyrexian language and framed Elish Norn. There's also going to be a new Phyrexian foil process for this set that uses the Phyrexian symbol with the foil process. They look really cool, however, they're only going to be found in collector boosters. And lastly, a raised oil slick foil process only available in the new completed bundle set. Not to be mistaken with the bundle edition or the gift bundle edition, this is its own bundle which does not have the Phyrexian foil treatment but the oil slick foil treatment only available within this bundle. If it sounds like a lot of variants and a lot of product and new and confusing things, well, you're not alone. Other people in the YouTube comments felt that way as well. One person even stated that the amount of treatments is just ludicrous. Cards being recognizable when they hit the board is important. When everything is special, nothing is special. I myself am super excited to see it. I'm excited to hear how the story goes and where it goes from here. Speaking of the story, let's talk about the dates. The first date is January 12th. It's when the story begins as well as building worlds is released so we can find out more about the set. Pre-release will be February 3rd through the 9th with the digital release for MTG Arena and MTG Online being on the 7th and tabletop release will be on the 10th. Finally, the Phyrexian Complete Edition bundle will release on March the 3rd. Again, I'm super excited to see how the story goes. I want to see if the Planeswalkers actually stand a chance. Again, it doesn't seem like they really will being that 5 will be completed and the fact that March of the Machines is the following set. but. Who knows, right? We, we may have some actual foiled plans here and might be able to see that the, the Planeswalkers actually have a chance. So I'm excited to see how that goes. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you feel like this is just another overprinting of products? Or are you excited to continue on with the Phyrexian storyline? Let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.